Now we're about uh, just a little ways past mid-October and something I see that uh, just jumps out at me when I'm watching social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, and uh, even some hunting videos. Now here that it's it's just not the rut yet, so those those big boys just aren't on their feet during the daylight hours. Um, they're nocturnal. And you know, what a shame, because if you hold on to that concept, then you know, why bother hunting at certain times of the year, you know, early early October, mid-October. And I'm here to tell you, you know, this is this is an untouched food plot. We haven't been here the entire hunting season. And it's been about five weeks in. And of course, the deer out here, we have a scrape right over here, a mock scrape. We have a camera on it. And we're finding the, the bucks are out here. There's um, various age class of bucks out here, and they're out here during the daylight. And there's one reason, one main reason they're, they're out here. You know, we have a high quality food source. We have bedding cover nearby. Um, you know, we have some of those habitat features. We don't have the best habitat features because we can't cut on this land. Um, we don't have enough space where we can put in some switchgrass. So we can't manipulate the habit, habitat a lot, um, but we can put some food plots in. But what we can do is leave it alone. And so this, this food plot, this area, this habitat has been left alone. And, you know, no surprise, or it might be a surprise to some, but there's actually daytime buck activity. And it's because there's no human hunting pressure on this property. Now, obviously you have to hunt, but we, we try to take the hunt out of the hunt, try to take the pressure out of the hunt. And it's amazing how bucks that are assumingly being nocturnal, all of a sudden pop up during the daylight hours. Bucks are always on their feet during daylight somewhere. If they're not on your land, they are somewhere. It's not that they're sitting back in a knoll 300 yards away, just waiting for it to get dark and then popping out at 2 a.m and saying here I am. It's, they're probably a half mile away to a mile away or more and they're walking around during the daylight in a land maybe like this where they're being unpressured. That doesn't mean you don't hunt it. And we have a redneck ghillie blind behind me that blends back, really blends in. We can access that from behind. Um, we can access it with some type of easterly wind in this case, southeasterly wind, which we actually get to hunt it if we want every week or two. And very low impact uh, access, departure after hunting. We're not getting into the line of deer movement that extends actually perpendicular to the line we come into that. And we can really have a low impact hunting approach. We actually have two stands over here over a water hole that are about 100 yards away. We have another stand that's 200 yards back in. So we're hunting this movement, but we're not right on top of this food source in this area. And for that, we have bucks walking around during the daylight. So think about it. If you have bucks that you're assuming are nocturnal, Think about the amount of pressure that you're placing on your land. Um, don't ever assume that they're just waiting till 2 a.m. to come 300 yards and pop into your food source or where your trail camera's at or a mock scrape or a water hole. Really think about that. They are moving around during the daylight somewhere. They're moving around in low pressure hunting situations, habitat areas where they can call a little slice of habitat their own during the daylight hours. And if it's not on your land, think about why, because typically it doesn't have anything to do with even the habitat that's here. Um, we could have some pretty poor habitat here, but if deer recognize this as an area of low risk and low hunting pressure, then they're going to be here no different than a neighborhood park, um, backside of a golf course, some of those suburban areas where they hold a lot of deer. You know, it's interesting you talk about uh, people shooting bucks in high population uh, areas of people. Uh, that's not hunting pressure. You know, when you have people playing ball in their backyard, basketball and golf courses and neighborhood park set-asides, that's not pressure just because there's a lot of people. Um, the deer get used to people in those locations. And often the, the habitats that they're going to are just areas where people aren't allowed to hunt, people aren't allowed to get into, uh, you know, those set-aside areas, maybe some of that's 10 acres that, that no one's allowed to go. So think about those areas that are around, those suburban areas where you might live and those areas will hold lots of deer concentrations. It's not because of the habitat or any kind of habitat improvements that are there. It's just simply, there's no hunting pressure. There's no human pressure. If you extend that to your hunting lands, even a little area like this, this property is 52 acres and we have a few acres up here on this top, but you can have that daylight movement and it just takes lowering that hunting pressure, lowering that human pressure, giving the deer the false sense of security 
that you're not watching them every time you go out to hunt.